John Caldwell is with us, uh, founder uh, of Phones for You, of course, conservative donor as well. Got a new book out um, about your autobiography of Love, Pain and Money. We'll come to that. Um, so much to talk to you about. First of all, welcome. Thank you Thank for you. joining us Good on the programme. You. Um, you, um, let's talk about Ukraine to start with, should we? Um, you do, you're a big supporter. Big supporter of Ukraine, yes. I mean, we all have to be. Uh, and right at the very beginning, I was an advocate of cutting energy purchases from Russia. Now, of course, we all know that would have devastating consequences for Europe. But I look at it very simplistically, which is every dollar that we pour into Putin's hands is being used to slaughter Ukrainian people. And I, I find that very difficult to live with. So uh, I don't know what the entire solution is to that, but we certainly should have done more to cut supplies and to reduce energy requirements. And you've helped on a practical level as well with offering your home up to Ukrainians. Yes, I've got a Ukrainian family, been living with me now for six months. I did it before the government scheme. I immediately went to find a Ukrainian family through, um, through social media and got uh, mother and son living with me. Her husband's on the front line. And, and of course, she, she's got a nice lifestyle with me, but of course, she's de devastated mentally because you know, everything that she loves is, is at home and under threat. Yeah, indeed. So she, when you talk to her, I mean, what does she talk about? How does she feel? She breaks down in tears quite she... regularly. Um, she's dealing with it quite well, but, you, you know, you can imagine being a thousand or more miles away from home and not knowing what's happening to your husband every minute of the day and all the rest of your family and knowing that your whole life heritage and lifestyle is under huge threat from a megalomaniac who's capable of anything. Um, it's a devastating situation to be in. And she's regularly in tears, but she also is having quite a nice life other than that. You know, she's on a lovely estate with me, uh, managed to get her child into school with my son. Uh, and so life is as normal as it can be, but there's always this huge cloud hanging over her head about her homeland. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, you come from humble beginnings. What made you decide to be a Tory supporter? <laughs> I think, well, I, I, I did come from very working class beginnings, but I'm very analytical and my analysis always of the economy is that capitalism is the only way forward. But it has to be capitalism with a heart. We have to have capitalism that grows the economy, grows it as quick as possible, and then uses that growth to help the poorer people of society, people who are ill, people who are disabled. And, and look after the old age pension. So all those people in need, need have to be looked after properly. And are we doing that? Well, we've not grown the economy. And of course, the Tory party have not covered themselves in, uh, in glory over the last three years, I'm afraid. Um, if they'd have employed the uh, strategy that I launched in March 2020, which was called well, Pandemic Recovery, we'd be in a lot better position now and the Tories would have something to sell to the population, that they were doing something long-term to create Britain's long-term future, to make Britain prosperous and help save the planet as well, which was to create the Silicon Valley of the environment somewhere in Britain, to use all sorts of incentives to get people from all over the world to come and locate in Britain and drive Britain business in the environmental space. Um, it's Liz, a no-brainer. Is Liz Truss doing a good job? <laughs> well, you supported her, didn't you? Uh, no, I, I, I'd just like to correct that. Go on, then. I did not support Rishi because he made an absolute mess of the economy in the time that he was in. I disagreed with nearly everything that he did. It could have all been done so much better. And as a consequence, I supported the devil that I didn't know. Um, and has she made a good start? No. I mean, it's ludicrous that they were, she was going to reduce income tax for the well-off, from 45% to 40%. I mean, why? What was, the, what was the benefit of that? No benefit at all, no benefit politically, in fact, politically stupid. Would it help to keep wealthy people on shore? No, because those people that want to escape will escape 40% tax just as easily as 45% tax. Um, it had no benefit to Britain whatsoever. That money could be used to invest in Britain's economic growth, which is what I've been advocating all along. Let's invest in real growth of the economy, then we can look after everybody, not just put five pence in the pound back into rich people's pockets. You made your money um, with Phones For You. Tell us how that started. 
Oh, that, that, that started because um, I wanted a mobile phone for my car sales business. I looked at the price of a mobile phone. You could hardly buy them in those days. I mean, it's bizarre now when you think back. But in 1986, to try and find a dealer or somebody who could sell you a mobile phone was now on impossible. And the batteries were this big. Oh, they were huge. They were yeah. suitcases. And yeah. Anyway, I managed to buy a couple. Uh, I managed to price a couple up, and the dealer offered me one for £1,500. And I said, well, what about if I buy two? And he said, thirteen fifty. And I thought, that's what? a massive <laughs> discount just for two phones. Yeah. There must be a lot of money in mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So I invited Motorola to come and see me and I bought 26 phones, which was the biggest order you could get in those days. Um, unfortunately, they advised me on the right, wrong mix of phones and I took their advice because I didn't know. And those 26 phones took me eight months to sell. You know, and about 10 years later, I was selling 26 phones every minute. <laughs> wow, OK. And looking back at your career now, what, what's the one tip that you would offer to potential entrepreneurs this morning? Um, well, you've got to be prepared to work extremely hard. But I always say to people, analyse your skills uh, really critically. You need ambition, drive, passion. To hold those together, you need resilience, which means you've got to work long hours, you've got to be capable of that under extreme press, pressure without cracking up. And if you've got those four qualities, then it's just a matter of how much commercial intellect have you got, what are your leadership skills, and if you do all six of those, if you've got all six of those, you're probably going to really fly. But you can do well with that with less. And what I would say to people, because people out there will be suffering now, they'll be struggling, both the... Uh, private individuals, but plus businesses. You've just got to keep striving and finding ways of uh, creating more growth, creating more profit, and getting through the tough times mm. so that you can prosper in the future. OK, I'm sure there's more about that in the book. Love, pain and money. When's it out now? Uh, it was out on my birthday on the 7th of October. Ah, many happy so, returns. Thank Libra, you. nice, gentle Libra. It's nice oh. to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed okay. for joining thank us. You, thank Kate. you. Pleasure. Thanks a lot.